exciting and in the first 40 minutes or so we're going to have a chance to do some warm-ups and we're going to look at the two pieces so we remember all the things we have to work on then we'll have time for a bit of a Q&A session so if you have a question for any of these strange British people up here um, then feel free to ask there'll be a little moment where we can do that later on and they're not all British are they because we've even got a guy here from Detroit this is Blake can you all say hello to Blake um, now the reason I said hi to Blake in particular is because yesterday was the first day of our talk. We just landed here in Philadelphia last night and yeah, it was Blake's birthday yesterday. So happy birthday. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to come up onto the stage so I can very quickly introduce you to everyone. So, just so you all know who you're singing with. First of all, let's find out over here where everyone is sat. I think over here we have Sopranos, is that right? That was like, yes, very good soprano sound for the morning. Uh, very impressive. So, sopranos, your two dream sopranos in Watchers 8 today are Andrea and Molly. Do you want to say hi? Hi! Then, over here, where are our tenors? Woo! Woo! Good tenors, great. So, tenors, you are going to be with Ewan here and with Blake, who plays drum and sings tenor sometimes. So, this is your team tenor. Um, and then, I'm guessing that means the basses are here. Hands up, basses. Hi! Yes. Excellent basses. <laughs> Um, so basses, you are with Chris and also with Dominic, and this is Dominic's first US tour as a singer in Watch Eight. So okay, can we give a big welcome to Dominic? <laughs> and that leaves the awesome Team Alto over here. How are you doing? <laughs> and Team Alto, you are with Katie, and you're also with my brother Barney. How about that? Yes. Um, so the way this works uh, is just like in our sessions, there are four instructions we need. We have, oh, sorry. <laughs> Does anyone remember Hannah? Of course you do. Can you say hi to Hannah? <laughs> and also, most important, because uh, he's with us for the first time today, and he's going to be making you all look good. Can you say hi to Andy, who's on camera today? <laughs> Um, so, in the session that we're going to be doing today, it's very simple, we have the same four instructions. We have this, what does that mean? Stop, very good. This means louder, this means, and this means, keep on going, very good. And at any time I clap a rhythm or make a sound with this, which I saw you doing already perfectly, you just have to copy it back. So if I go, shh, 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 perfect. So, what do you say, do you want to filter out into the room and find, maybe find your parts? And all of you, can you stand up for me? And we're just going to get going with something.
Ein Knall von mir, Dom. Sie können doch so ein Ding machen. He's the new boy, so we've got to get him involved straight up. He's excellent. And can I get Hannah up on stage? <laughs> and whilst Hannah is coming, where's Blake? Can I get Blake up on stage as well? Where's Blake? Where's Blake? I can't see him. There he is. <laughs> nice. Um, great. And let's take one more. Can I have Katie, please? Thank you. So. Hannah is going to be leading over here, Team Soprano. Um, Dom, you're going to be with the guys, tennis and basses. Katie, you're going to be with Team Alto. And Blake's going to give us a bit of oh, good energy, Alto. So I like this. Like, excellent. And um, Blake is going to be giving us a beat. And all you guys have to do is copy whatever they do using these sounds the, the shh, the and the t. Okay, so let's see what Blake gives us for a beat. Can everyone feel that beat, yeah? And one, two, three, let's go! Okay, so when I hold up the number one, you're going to be copying your leader, whoever that might be. When I hold up the number two, I want freestyle. Okay, can you all just say for me, freestyle! Freestyle! And that way, when we get to that, obviously you can improvise. So you're going to fit whatever you come up with to the rhythm that you hear over here, to the groove. But it can be anything you like. You can use this sound. You can use a clap, a click, a snap, anything you like. You can use a different vocal sound if you want. Anything you like. It can be super simple or it can be very complex. Whatever you do, it's just freestyle and see if let's see if we can create like 150 different parts happening at the same time. Okay, that's the idea. If you can't think of anything, just look around the room or copy whoever you see and find something you like. Okay, so either make up your own thing or copy something else you can see in the room. That's the number two. So the number one, you copy your leader. Number two, you do your own thing but with everyone else. Let's see what happens if we start with maybe a slightly faster groove. Yeah, sure. Okay, so here we go. And one, two, three, four.
Do we know what these chords are? Have a listen to the first one. The second one. The third one. And the fourth one. Can you sing for me the first chord, which is here? Pick any notes. Just hum that for me. Very nice. The second chord. Nice. The third chord. Nice. And the fourth chord. Very nice. And can I get Vachaze back to the stage as we do this? And this is going to be lovely. Can you just all say for me, mm. and say for me, mm. Mm. and ah. ah. Very good. Let's just do three beats um, on each chord, as if we're building the structure of grace. Let's just start humming it, really nice and gentle. Pick the notes that feel good for you. Da, 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 da. That's the first chord. On, what should I think on to mic? Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, one, two, three. This is humming. Chord two, chord three. So if you are out here, you've met your members of Vultures 8, so basses you're going to be starting with Chris and Dom. Then we have the Sopranos who are with Andrea and Molly. We have the tenors who are with Ewan. And we have the altos who are with Barney and Katie. And Blake is just going to be giving us a beat all the way through this to keep us together, keep us rolling along. And Anna's going to be down here as well helping out Team Soprano. Excellent. So let's see what happens if we just do the first bit of the piece. We're, just, we're not going to do the transition, let's just see if we can get each of the different melodies. So first of all, let's start with the bass. Oh, one, two, three. rolling along like a beautiful foundation that we are. Then we're going to hear the sopranos melody one time and then stop. Then we're going to hear the tenors melody one time and then stop. Then we hear the alto melody one time. Then you go to your second melody, which we're about to get to, and then you keep going, and everyone else comes back in at that point. Does that make sense? I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? If you reckon you can do it without the score, because you've got everything else going on helping you, see if you can do it just with your ears and with your eyes and with everyone who's up here. Oh, that's good. I like brave people. Excellent. Love it. Okay, let's just try that opening again. This time, really finding that soft colour. Really beautiful. Let's keep it going. Okay, bases. This is our tempo. Let's really find that. Thank you. 
tenors over here, we've learned the melody that goes in the first part. One song we raise, melting by its fear. When we get to that, if you want to sing that, great, all those people. Um, it's Molly who's going to be singing that, and it's Ewan who's going to be singing that. So we'll practice that in just a minute. And then we have the second half of our song. We just have a quick go with the Juma section. Is that possible? Yeah? Great. So we have... Okay, so we're going to have everybody singing Juma at the beginning, and then we're going to put in Dang Yun Dong Samo He after that. So Juma for everyone, two times. And then after that, we're going to put in Dang Yun Dong Samo He. Juma, Juma. After, after three, everyone with Juma and super big energy. Give me big energy, okay? And a one, two, three. Juma, Juma, Juma. Juma, 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 Jo. Juma, Juma, Juma. Juma, Juma, Juma. Juma, Juma, Juma. Juma, 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 Jo. Juma, Juma, Juma. Juma, Juma, Juma. If that's possible, I'd also then love to think about the sound that we find with our dang yun dong. What was it that we're hitting? Do you remember? A giant bell. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not singing dang yun dong, but dang yun dong, dang yun dong dong. And over here, Team Samoe. Can you give me any more? You're like, mm. I think you can. I think there's a lot of power just here. The Juma over here is driving really, really well. That's great. Fantastic. Let's just try one, one time around with all the four parts and then practice the end as well, just so we can all make sure we get it right. Mostly me, to be honest. Okay? Um, oh, yes. Is anyone doing the human being defines us, common life unites us melody? A couple of people? Great. So if you want to do that, again, you and, and Molly will be taking that on. So feel free to sing with them. If not, we're just going to sing. Let's actually do it twice around, so we just really get to dig it in. So it's Juma, Dang Yun Dong, Samoe. Straight on it. Give me as much energy as you can. Really give me a good posture. What is good posture? It's not this, is it? It's like, watch, watch as eight things. Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's like standing like a normal person. That's like kind of how I like to think about it. Here we go. Juma, and Dang Yun Dong, and Samoe. Just like that. <laughs> Oh, one, two, three. Chuma, chuma, chuma. Chuma, chuma, chuma. Chuma, chuma, chuma. a lot later on, so just keep your heads up and it'll be fine. Um, fantastic. So we've got these two different segments of this piece. Let's just at the end of our rehearsal, we'll just stick that all together and do a run through of the whole piece. But for now, I'd just like to have a quick sing through of the Lighthouse Keeper, if that's possible. So I, if you're using scores for this, grab them. Okay, so we have now our very different, much more chilled vibe with the Lighthouse Keeper. And um, if you are singing all the harmony parts, which I think a lot of you are, which is amazing, just make sure you're listening to and singing with your member of Watchers 8. And then, hands up if you are singing the melody all the way through this. Hands up if you're melody all the way through. So that's going to be like, definitely for sure, Fox Elementary, and for sure, FLC as well. Brilliant. So it's, uh, it's Blake, who's our soloist in this, so if you listen to Blake, you'll be with him and everything will be well. Can you 
you sing for me your first first notes if you're singing at the beginning? And lovely. This is really sounding beautiful this morning. Here we go. A huge round of applause. And everyone have a seat. Really, really lovely. Um, really fantastic. In just a second, I'm just going to ask Watchers 8 if they've got any top tips for us. But just before that, a couple of quick things. So, just working backwards. Do, do, do at the end. How many times do we sing it? 
Very good. So we're going to sing do, do, do four times if you're the melody parts. If you're singing all the harmony with all the score, congratulations, that was really good. Fantastic. Um, we'll come to questions in just a second. And, oh, there's some water, brilliant, fantastic. Um, just before that, you did a great job of just watching me. And what I would love to do, really, as much as possible when we sing this, is just do what we talked about in our sessions and sing as much as possible with our ears. So I'm going to wave occasionally, but I think I can just back away because you can hear what's going on and you're singing with the beautifully, the sound right here is just gorgeous. So it's really, really impressive. I'll just help out occasionally, but as much as possible, I won't get too involved and we'll just sing with our ears, which is what we spend our life doing as a cappella singers. Um, at the very beginning, we'll find a beat, we'll find a tempo, and then after that, we're going to hand over to Blake, and whatever Blake does with the solo, we're going to follow him through that. So that's really going to be gorgeous. Rogers 8, um, have any of you got some oh, top tips? Chris, do you want to say something? Um, if you're a bass, or indeed an alto, you'll be very used to doing lots of do, 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 or dum, and uh, not necessarily singing very much the tune. Uh, now, this might seem boring on the face of it, but I think there's a lot we can do with it. And I would say you should pay special attention to the consonants. And um, so if you think about the beginning of grace, um, make sure that you do a nice doom. Like a double, imagine you're clocking a, a double bass. It's got that sort of percussion at the start of the note. Um, and then similarly in the, uh, the do in the lighthouse keeper. I think that's, that's very important. That's a good tip. Can we just get everyone to just practice the doom sound, which is like the You just all say Imagine now you're plucking your bass with a <laughs> And if you can hear that, as well as using the <laughs> boom, we actually just carry it on a bit so we have <laughs> Can we try that? We take, take a hand as well and imagine you're plucking the bass and <laughs> Very good with me, one more time, and <laughs> Very nice, there's a whole string section out there in the bass department Very good tip, thank you Anyone else got something they, they think they'd like to say? Barney's in, upper voices well, si Similar to Chris's point about the quality of the front of the note. I think in these accompanying parts, what we're always trying to do is provide a hue for the soloist to sit in. So when we listen to Blake sing, we should be trying to make the noise that he's making in a way that just sits ever so slightly behind them. So again, similar to what Chris said, they appear to be the boring parts, but actually they're the parts that really make the piece and how we deliver them will have um, either make him sound like the world's greatest singer or somebody who's having to try too hard. So uh, we should definitely aim for the first one. We know it was Blake's birthday yesterday, so we've got to be nice to him, right? We've got to be nice. Uh, any, other, uh, any other comments? Ewan? Yeah, I would just say, whenever we're singing the chorus of it, maybe not to put too much pressure into the consonants of the words, really kind of get into the kind of chill Just maybe quickly just demonstrate the opening of the chorus, if that's possible. Yeah, but I, I was going to add this sort of soprano point for that, which is basically try and think of yourself as optimizing the tenors. So I don't think, don't, don't try and be a main event. You're actually doing a really great job of it already, sopranos, but actually keeping it really chilled on the top and like, and actually just not trying too hard to like project the sound, I think is going to get more of the sound that we want and kind of just sit on top of what these guys are doing. Really nice. Can, can, we just, yeah, can we just demonstrate what you're saying, um, seeing just the when you set sail? Three, four. When you set sail on your journey, happiness is far away. Love will guide you till the morning, lead your heart down to the day. Don't resist the rain and storm.
No, we're good. Just doing so great. Fantastic. So that piece, I think you're doing a really great job on. I'd just like to do one run of Grace, and then we're going to have a few minutes for questions and answers. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, so thank you to the one person who went, yes. Uh, so, so can everyone stand up for me? Let's do one run of Grace, and then we're going to just sit down, chill out, and think about some things. All right, so this is Grace. Imagine now this is our concert. This is our last practice for this piece before we do it as our final performance in about 45 minutes. So let's just really think of all of, all of the way through it. Remember everything we have to do and show me all the different colors, all the different energies that we can find in this. Imagining that first half, which is much more like a lullaby. That's, I think, the word we chose for this piece. And then the second half, which is really thinking about that tribal vibe that we talked about. I think we all talked about the hacker in the rugby. Yeah, do you remember talking about the rugby? You're like, yeah. Do you remember what rugby is? It's quite a big weekend for you guys with a, with a different type of sport, isn't it? So, yeah. There you go. So, our version of American football. Just channel that in the second half. Here we go. Can we have a note? Faces, are we ready? We've got our notes? Here we go. And one, two, three. Really think about that sound. Good. Here we go, sopranos. One, and then stop.
so good to have you here. So very good. And have a seat, everyone. Really, really excellent. Team Soprano. Team Soprano, can you just say for me, Dan? Can you give me a bit more of that twang when we sing it later? Would that be possible? I'd love a bit more. Okay. Um, you've done great. This is absolutely brilliant. Having a chance to run through those two pieces before we do a proper performance of them in a little while, I think it's been great for all of us. And I love how prepared you are for today. It makes our job so easy when we turn up and you're singing so brilliantly. So a big thanks to all of you for the effort that you put in for today and also to your teachers for all the hard work they've been doing. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> now, I said we'd have a few minutes for questions and answers. So, hands up if you've got a question for Botchers 8. Is there anyone who's got a question? Oh, over here, I see uh, someone pointing. Who's got a question? Can question be like general or general? can be general, absolutely anything you like. <laughs> and Andy is here like lightning to get this. Would you say you would prioritize practice over technique or technical practice? Ooh, yeah, that's a big question. Wow, what an opener. Would you prioritize practice over technique or technique over practice? What's the difference? What's the difference? Practice is the answer they did back. So explain a bit more what you mean. As a group. Yeah, so we're thinking, I think, about the difference between maybe, this is a really lovely question, thank you for explaining it. The ideas of how we prepare as a soloist versus the work that we then do as an ensemble. So should we, who's got a, a thought? Barney's up. Oh, Barney then goes. Um, the first thing I'd say is that bad habits die hard. So I think it's always important when you practice to practice properly. And sometimes we find ourselves in a group approaching a rehearsal when we're maybe fatigued, for example, or not as well prepared as we might be for whatever reason. And we have to be very careful in those instances that we don't fall into bad habits. So I think good technique forms an important part of every bit of rehearsal that we ever do, or in an ideal world. And specifically about the solo thing versus the ensemble thing. Of course, being in Vocha's Eight, the most important thing that we do as eight members is offer ourselves as individuals for the betterment of the group. So all of the time we're making sacrifices. And as part of that, of course, that can impact on our own individual techniques. So we have to be very careful as individuals that when we're, for example, taking vibrato out of our sound, which is something that's very important to the work that we do, we're doing that in a way that is healthy for us as individuals. And if we're making so that if we're giving a little bit too much of ourselves in that instance, when we leave the group environment, we would go and make sure that we undo uh, any difficulties that we may have individually had. I would also end by saying that the best practice that we do as a group is sing concerts. So we can practice pieces 500 times in rehearsals, but it's only after they've been on stage five to 10 times that we really feel that we've, we've got them there, I would say. Andrew, do you have something to add? I was just gonna wonder, can we just maybe sing a chord that is us using our individual voices and has kind of got our individual colour in it. And maybe Barney, just click your fingers and we'll go to the equivalent of what a sort of watches eight sound. So just still sort of mezzo forte. Sure. Third on the top microphone. Off microphone, top to arm. Oh. How do we do blend like we just demonstrated? That's the, that's a good question. The answer is a lot of work, for sure. Uh, but do you want to just explain that a little bit more? Um, one thing 
And so one thing we think about, this, this would be my thought, and then others can offer thoughts. One thing we think about is sound being like a pyramid. So it has to be widest at the bottom, and then get uh, thinner towards the top. So the sound that we make at the bass has to be a wide sound, because it, it basically contains all of the notes that are going to be in the chord going up, and then as it goes up, we, we should feel like each, each voice that's added going up the, the chord is just like sitting on top of everything else. It's not uh, forcing its way in there, it's just uh, gracing us on top. That's one thing we think about. I would say, yeah, it's quite different between a group like this and a group of, sort of however many of you guys are out there now. I would say one thing that's kind of, one thing that goes between any kind of size of ensemble is just listening. I'm always aware that what I'm doing is listening to the other seven members of the group more than I'm listening to my own voice. If, I, if basically I'm trying to hear, especially when it's me and Blake singing together, if we sing something with just the two of us, I'm trying to basically just hear his sound. And that's usually a pretty surefire way to make sure that we're singing in the same way and making a nice kind of blended sound. I think that's a great answer. That idea of listening is so important in everything we do. Good question. Paul, sorry, can I get one more thing? Yeah. <laughs> do you mind? Is that's fine. Right. Give me two minutes. Um, it's a little bit about how much voice we individually use as well. So the signatures of our voices as individuals are very unique. Part of that comes from vibrato, but also part of it comes from how much of our individual instruments that we're using. So again, if we made that same chord with everybody on full voice, then you've got a lot of sound as well as a lot of vibrato. Um, now, if we take, um, if we were just to hum that chord, and open it, we're using really just the very outside of the vocal folds, which is, again, taking away a lot of that individual personality found in the, the resonance of our individual instruments, which means blend. Nice demonstration. We've got time for one more question, and I see a hand straight up. Yeah. Sorry, we'll get to you later as well. Yes, go on. So, when you say that like, you put out the amount of sound that you're putting out, um, when you're going like lower, how do you, uh, when you're like going as high as you can and you're straining, but you go lower and you're not singing the right note, what's the best way to like combat like singing the right note but not pushing yourself too much so that you can't sing at all? I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> I think it's definitely relaxing into the note rather rather than pushing it. I mean, certainly on the bottom, if you're singing bass, rather than going ah doing that, just, uh, that kind of sound actually projects a lot more. But for the, the tenors, it's it's utilizing the head voice rather than you know doing that. Uh, just keep it really easy. Yeah, I think so. De definitely don't don't overthink it. Don't pressurize it. Just keep it light. That's the best part. Of it. I think, um, yeah, what Bates says, like relaxing into it. One little tip I would say, um, if you have the luxury of like, a rest before you sing a low note, uh, just swallow. It just resets the voice and it just, uh, you'll, you'll find it a bit easier to get down to those low notes. Brilliant. We have time, I think, for one more question. And you had your hand up, so I'm coming to you. Go on. trying to sing a low note and, and you want to get more into it but not have it uh, go wrong. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about this sort of thing because I don't think particularly the other time but whenever I do have to, um, I try and think less about the sound coming out of my mouth and rather like going back and in and like resonating low into your whole body. Um, yeah, rather than like, forcing the sound out, because that can make you strain. Yeah. I would also... Okay. Look, no, I'm um, uh, sorry. Um, I think uh, what lots of people forget when you're singing low is that you still need to engage your body when you're singing, definitely. I think sometimes, I included, get quite lazy when I'm singing low, but realising that you have to engage your core and everything uh, can make sure to keep it as uh, engaged and uh, sounding as possible. Is it possible to quickly address the idea that being loud as a singer is all actually about how much we resonate? So um, we, for example, as a group, can sing you again that chord 
to R, where we have no real resonance that's going to carry into the room. We'll sing it quite loudly, but without the resonance that carries. And now what we're going to do is engage what we call our mask resonance and see the difference. finding that easier as singers. So sometimes when you sing low, you can feel that the sound really goes deep into your voice, but actually trying to maintain quite a lot of resonance in the mask is a very good way of keeping the sound nice and present. Uh, our singing teacher talks to me all the time about singing low notes with a very clear rather than a very, so a very clear rather than a very covered sound it makes a big difference. It means you have to push the sound out. Thank you. And if we just take all of these ideas and fit them into the two pieces we've been working on, that idea of resonance, we can find a place in grace that we're trying to find that, we can think about all the different qualities, the different colours, in everything that we're going to be putting into our two songs later. So as we're singing later, for sure we'll be finding the music with us, be listening, which was such an important message I think that's come out of what we've been talking about today. Really be in engaging and enjoying the music that we are singing, the text that we are singing, but also just see if you can hear and feel the different things that are happening with where we place the sound and how that feels. I can see hands going up all over the place and I'm going to say I'm afraid we have to actually take a break now. So we're going to have, I believe it's uh, the most important part of the day, the toilet break. So uh, if you do need, to, I'm going to maybe um, ask our team here just to come and uh, give any information that's needed. We're going to basically stop, I think, for about 10 minutes. And when we start back again, it's going to be constant time. And I'm going to come and find you guys who had a question and see what you've got to ask. So thank you very much. Uh, welcome to, I suppose, what is our performance part of this amazing extravaganza this morning. So we're going to start off this little uh, musical sharing moment by singing you guys a couple of songs. And then after that, each school is going to come up and I'll invite you up one by one to come and sing to everyone else, and then we're going to finish this whole event by singing our two big combined pieces together. So, uh, the first piece, um, who's going to introduce Puccinate? It's over to Barney. Can you, because um, he's my brother and sometimes I like him, can you give Barney a big round of applause? Thank you very much. Um, so this is a piece from the Italian Renaissance by a composer called Giovanni Croce. And Croce was the master of music at St. Mark's Basilica in Venice, shortly before a very famous composer called Claudio Monteverdi, whose work you may have come across. Uh, the text is in Latin, Puccinate in Neo Menia Tuba, which means blow up the trumpet in the new moon. And something that marks this piece out as being particularly Venetian in the style with which it's written is the fact that we've separated from a choir of eight voices into two choirs of four voices and we'll pass the music back and forth. Uh, that's called antiphony, so it's written in an antiphonal style. And in the basilica, the musicians would have stood in opposing galleries and sent the music back and forth above the heads of the parishioners below. So this is Puccinate, and if you'd like to listen out for anything, you can listen out for the different instrumental sounds that you'll hear as we talk about praising God with all of those different instruments. Yeah. 
Um, it's, uh, yeah, so we're going to go forward quite a few hundred years now uh, and sing a jazz standard, How High the Moon. Uh, this is a piece you probably know. Uh, it's been recorded by loads and loads of artists. Um, I think Gloria Gaynor did a version. Who else? Louis Armstrong, yeah. Um, our favourite as a group is uh, probably one by Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, and it's kind of, uh, this arrangement by Naomi Crellin is kind of modelled on that one. But uh, if you're a fan of 20th century jazz, there's a couple of little quotes that you might also recognise. So this is How High the Moon.
that was, that was awesome as they leave the stage another huge round of applause. As we were talking to some of these guys at the beginning of the session, I think we, we discovered that we were 20% excited to be here, 80% scared. And I'm very happy to say I think we're now 100% excited. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, we're over to team two. So FLC, do you want to take up to the stage? Okay, hang on, just a second. Now we have our team two on the stage. Can we give them a huge round of applause? Yeah, we want a little and, clarity. And you want to talk about the piece? Sure. Yeah. Um, uncharacteristic to the weather that uh, we're having, our Bob Tones from Franklin Learning Center here are going to be singing Coldest Winter. Um, I know it's 60 degrees outside, but uh, we're gonna we're going to we're gonna get winter vibes, I think. <laughs>
Yeah, for sure, you can definitely introduce a piece before that starts. Can we give them a huge round of applause, please? <laughs> Hi folks, this is the Gant Concert Choir, and we're going to be singing a gospel classic called Total Praise. experience we just had. Okay, I need to invite Watch Us 8 to come join these guys, so I think we're going to do a piece together. And so that's kind of fun. Um, so we know this one and you know this one, so I think we're just going to sing it together and see what happens. So, then, Watch Us 8, can you find your relative places um, in the crowd? And do you want to tell us?
Fantastic. Just before we get to our last two pieces of today and perform all together, can you all just give everyone who's just stepped onto the stage one more huge round of applause? the different textures, the different emotions that you've just given through those performances were spellbinding. Thank you so much for sharing your voices and your art with all of us. And thanks to Gamp for letting these guys bust in on that piece as well. I think that was quite fun. Um, right, so we're going to sing our last two pieces. And the first of those, I think we're going to do the Lighthouse Keeper first, and then we're going to finish with Grace. So do you want to stand up and let's give the Lighthouse Keeper its performance? Cool. So let's, as we give this performance now, just think about all those different things that we've worked on. But most importantly, let's remember this is our performance, so let's give it everything we've got. Let's really enjoy this experience of this massed choir singing together for the very first time today. Just have a listen to the first note from Barney. Can we just sing our first chord? Build yourself a boat, babe. Make yourself a 
yourselves a huge round of applause. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist holding it just a bit longer at the end because I love that moment of silence right at the end of the piece. It's just magic. That was fantastic. We've got one more song to sing all together to close out today, but just before we do that, there's a few people to say thank you to. First of all, can we have a big thank you to all the tech team who did all the amazing stuff? <laughs> the best way to finish anything, I think. And that's going to be with Grace. You know how this goes now. You've done it once. This time, give it absolutely everything. I want to feel the vibrations of sound, particularly as we enter into that tribal second section. So this is Grace. Good luck, everybody.
great way to finish. Oh, you sound amazing. I think that's the last time I'll do that for this year, and that's just so I can say to all of you one more time a huge thank you for being here. Singing in a choir is so good for you, and hopefully you enjoy it too. That's why we're all here, because we love what we do, and we love the fact we get to make our living, spend our life making music. So as we begin our US tour, if you want to stay in touch, come find us on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I'm looking at Andrew and all the others that I should be getting. Uh, but if not, we hope we'll see you again in real life very soon. But once again, a huge thanks and have a great day and we'll see you very soon. Thank you everyone. Thank you.